Okay. So um, what I think I will do first um, is to summarize as Pastor Tim suggested and, and then go over what we went over last week and where we got to. So we're talking about the evolution process of four main pillars of belief or, or scientific uh, that, that undermines or underpins the, not undermines, underpins the evolution uh, uh, theory. And that is the, the fact or the fact of bones, whether the bones tell us that we've evolved from certain um, or helps to, to support the theory that we've come from a descendants of creatures to man and going all the way back to a, a single cell so that we're all descendants from this one cell of life. The second is the geological column, the fossils, and the aging of those fossils, the aging of the rocks, whether that supports the millions of years or billions of years to support that theory. The third is the mutation, the mutations that have formed through these single from a single cell to the different variants of kinds um, all the way to um, flying flying animals flying creatures to to man um, and the variations of that and then of course the actual theory of what evolution means itself and that is evolving from something singular simple cell to more complex and uh, higher order um, and that's what we're that's what we're uh, looking at. And what I did last week is, I am showing that each of those pillars are completely broken, and through science, and we went through the apes and we evaluated that there is no evidence of morphation, mor uh, morphology of from descendants from apes to man. I'm talking about the bones only. And it was agreed that nothing has been found in that evidence yet to go from, in, as far as bones are concerned, to apes to man. We, 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 theor we went through the brain capacity to show that. So that's the one pillar that really, Martin agreed as well, that there was, we're, we're looking for those, that evidence still. Um, Oh, and, uh, I didn't. I didn't agree with the point. I just. I just agreed that the fossil record wasn't complete. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. So today, and I'm so 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 sad that is not here because we're going to do the aging of the Earth right now, um, and which is uh, in science is uh, the latest science because I'm, I'm bringing you basically taking you from what we've been talking about which is 15 years old really up to date to the latest technology and we did see the last week um so first of all does everybody understand what i've just said um that um the, the basic four pillows are the <coughs> bones the geological columns the fossils mutation and the evolution theory itself so i want to go back to the the, the key points or the because I want to relate this to our faith, to Bible, to the Bible, because, of course, we believe the Bible is true. This is what we started off with last week. And I'm going to read a little bit more because it is disturbing um, what's happening in the world. And I want to put this across. It is a little bit disturbing to our faith. Um, there is, this is Todd, Todd Wood speaking. There is an influential movement today that many Christians are unaware of. Its goal is to reintroduce Darwinian evolution into Christian theology. This idea is called theistic evolution or evolutionary creation. The primary group pushing this view is Biologos. On its website, it has had a lot of well-known Christians and thinkers, many of whom Todd uh, uh, respects, saying good things about it. The organization is teaching heresy, he believes. It was seen to be heresy back in the 19th century when Asa Gray, an American scientist and friend of Charles Darwin, tried to take Darwin's history of the world and use it to reinterpret Genesis. 
Darwin didn't think this was possible. After all, the whole point of his theory was to replace the Genesis account. And that is a bit of a, a bit of an assumption there, but he did, did not denounce God, um, Darwin. Uh, nevertheless, some theologians and scientists have tried to merge the two histories and attempt to hold on to the gospel. He believes it's the devil's delusion. And here are some of the heresies that theistic evolutionists promote that contradict the Bible account. And I think we went, we went through these last week, I think. So number one, if evolution is true, there were hundreds of millions of years of death in the world before Adam sinned. Number two, the creation has always been subject to corruption. Number three, Adam and Eve were just two hominids out of a group of hominid type creatures that predated them by hundreds of thousands of years. Number four, there are no unique created kinds since everything goes back to a common bacterial ancestor. Number five, God used evolution which progresses through killing off the unfit as the primary way to create everything we see. Clearly, this is a completely different history of the world than the one taught in the Genesis. Biologos is well-funded and spends a lot of money trying to influence pastors and seminary students. But it is dangerous not only in its teaching, bad theology, it is presenting un unsound scientific theories. And we'll be, now we're going to be talking about those unsigned unsound scientific theories and if you want a copy of that i can give you a copy of that now of those um is everybody with me so far uh okay so just to reiterate uh the, the points are if evolution is true there's hundreds of millions of years of death uh, of species, Adam was not uh, before Adam sinned. But yeah, before any humans existed, right? Um, uh, no, it's not. That's not so, what they're saying. But so, yeah. so Marty, we're, Marty, we're Marty, That's not what he uh, said. I, 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 what well, he said. whatever. Before before Adam sinned, before humans exist to, existed to sin, it's the same thing. So. Uh, the second point is Adam was just uh, another member of a species of hominids. Is that the second point? The spe no, the second point is the creation has always been subject to corruption. The third point, Adam and Eve were, were just two hominids, hominids in, out of a group of hominid type creatures that predated them by hundreds of thousands of years. And the fourth, there are no unique created kinds since everything goes back to a common bacterial ancestor. And number five, God used evolution, which progresses through killing off the unfit as the primary well, way to create everything it, we see. That's, that's, it's not really, that's not really the primary point of evolution that things are killed off. It's, it's fitness has to do with reproductive ability and advantage and stuff in that so it's it's more than just that point but you know used god used natural selection and the process of you know the processes enumerated you know in evolutionary theory i guess is the general gist of it right yeah but the result of that is those millions of deaths because of mutation obviously they're going to be selected out but some survived and then eventually formed those wings uh, or whatever they were isn't but, that just but, the first point but going, but going through yeah but going through that is is a lot of destruction pain suffering and destruction pain suffering destruction pain suffering and destruction and then millions of years will take care of everything and that's how evolution is that's how the evolution theory uh, basically uh, uh, explains it is through millions and millions of years time will look after everything and it will happen but at the result, with the result of millions and millions of death and destruction, pain and suffering. So I, I'm still confused how the first point is different from the last point, because it seems to be the same, talking about the same thing. Uh, okay. If evolution is true, there's millions of years of death. 
And then the last point is God uses evolution to kill off the unfit. I, I correct me if I'm wrong. Aren't, aren't those the same thing? Well, one is saying bringing God into it, and one is not. And um, they we're talking about human beings with the first one. We did not talk about human beings on the last one. But yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, um, but it's just it's, a point. It's an, it's interesting because I, I think it's those points are more bringing up points of theology than anything else, right? Yes, we're talking about the Bible. It, it, yes, it go it contradict. This is exactly what it is. It contradicts the Bible account. If this is true, we cannot believe in the, the, the theology of sin, of why sin happened. Jesus came to save us from sin. And he, the Bible says that Adam was the first sinner. So it's going against the Bible, the Bible what yeah, the Bible if, is saying. That's what I'm saying. If, if your interpretation of Genesis is such Correct. that it had to have historically happened exactly that way, yes. Uh, no, hey, no, 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 I uh, no. hang on, hang on, hang on, not, stop. Not my, not my, Marty. not, not, it's not my interpretation. It's not an interpretation. Marty. Marty, I don't want us to get into the discussion point until Kevin has gone through, through, if you have a clarification, ask a clarification. Well, but, um, we, we, we don't want to, we, we want to give him a chance to lay out what all he wants to say and then right. we discuss but, Okay. But you can't you can't get into a discussion of every point. But I do point. think it is I do think it is a fair point to bring up that there isn't a hundred percent unified consensus on how to interpret Genesis. So he's talking, he's saying that these things go against the Bible, go against Genesis, as interpreting Genesis as if these things had to have happened. I think well, no, that's no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. I I, I need to explain something right here it's not just genesis no it's not it's just first genesis, the whole Bible. it's first Cor it's first corinthians 15 it's romans chapter 5 uh, the entire theology of the apostle paul is based upon two that is based upon the fact that adam was the first man who brought who sinned and brought sin condemnation and death to be imputed to be reckoned to be accounted to the whole human race that's his theology in Romans 5. You can read it, 5, 11 to the end of the chapter. Then his, his second idea is that Christ came as the second Adam, as the last Adam. And he brings, by his obedience, he brings justification, grace, and life to those who believe. And so, so the point is, is that in Pauline theology in 1 Corinthians 5, since by man came death, by also by man came the resurrection from the dead. Um, and then Romans, Romans 5, 1 Corinthians 15 are saying that the linchpin of all theology is one man acted on behalf of the whole human race and brought us into sin. The, the second, and then it's saying that the second Adam, who was Jesus, the last Adam, he acted one man on behalf of the new, what's called the new man in Pauline theology. So, if so you this want is, to this is Pauline theology, basically. Well, Marty, it's the Bible. Okay, right. so I, if you I don't, understand, if you believe, it's in, I understand yeah. it's in the Bible, but this this theology is primarily coming from Paul. It's is it coming from any other authors besides Paul, or is it just Paul? Well, Paul wrote eleven books of uh, of the New Testament. So, what, what's your point, Marty? Are you saying I'm, that Paul I'm not? Wrong? I'm not making a point. I'm not making. Well, a point. I'm asking for clarification, but, you know, if Jesus, if Jesus uh, also had the same theology and mentioned it, um, or if the other gospel writers had the same theology as Paul versus this is, this is Pauline theology. It's coming primarily from him as a source. No, no, you, you can't, you can't do that. You can't drive a wedge between um, you know, Jesus and Paul. Jesus affirmed um, Genesis, he attributed it to the authorship of Moses. He goes right back to chapter 2, verses 24 and 25, and says, from the beginning, it hasn't been this way. For this cause a man shall leave his, his father and mother, shall cleave unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So, so um, Jesus, whether this is right or wrong, Marty, I'm saying Jesus in the gospel says that Moses wrote Genesis, and he reaffirms 
that Genesis 2, 24 and 25 is the word of God. Okay, so um, now... Um, so you're, the, you're saying this, this isn't... This wait, isn't wait, I'm, not, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not done yet, okay? But wait, wait till I finish. The second thing that Jesus says, uh, not Jesus says, but, but if you read the genealogies, there's a genealogy in Matthew, and I think there's a genealogy in Luke. And they both trace everything back to whom? 14 generations, 14 generations, and then boom, it traces back to Adam. And so, so the point is, is that it's not just um, Paul, it's, it's the entire New Testament um, is, is buying into the idea that there is one, um, one man. Yeah, um, that, that was Adam. The history, that was the... the the scripture of Genesis, like nobody's questioning that that's what was written in the Bible. Yes. Now, if you want to question whether it's true, because you think that, that evolution might be teaching that actually Adam wasn't the whole man. Well, see, that's, that's a discussion that we need to have. But my point here is simply this, is that that is Bible theology. That is not like somebody's interpretation. That is what it's teaching. Anybody who doesn't, who doesn't see um, the importance of Adam being the first man who brought us into sin and Jesus being the second man and the last man, the head of the new race who brings us into life. Anybody who doesn't see that is not seeing properly what the Bible is teaching. So what, what I'm, what's bothering me is, is this is not a matter of interpretation. It's a matter of belief. Some people believe it. Some people well, don't believe it, but you, I, but you, can't, I'm, you can't. I'm not with I'm not with I'm not in agreement with you on that point. So that's that's fine if you guys want to make that point, but I'm I I don't I don't agree with that at all. So well, then we need to discuss that. Why I don't, don't think, you? Agree? I don't think that it's I, I don't think it's correct to say that. Oh, if you don't have my interpretation, then it's a matter of belief. When there's there's uh, okay, can, uh, it, can it's I worth having a discussion something? about the interpretation of Genesis. Is all I'm saying. Okay. So if this isn't really a if this isn't really a conversation about science at all, and it's just a conversation about Genesis and theology, then we don't. No, honey. Even... No, it's not. We're going on to no. that, but we. Yeah. But but listen, Martin. If if we're not agreed on the theology, then we're yeah. not going to understand where the yeah. points of conflict are with science. Yeah. Well, that's the whole there's, point. There's going to be. I'll bring something points, up now. If you, there's to ask different Martin. points of conflict depending on your theology, depending on the belief. Yeah, yeah. That that that's true, Marty. Because. You know whether or not they're right or wrong, there are other Christians who don't believe that either Genesis one is that 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 Genesis one has to you know be a a first Adam type of thing. He could be the the first um, anti hominid or whatever you want to call it. So okay, uh, okay, so okay. yeah. But can one I just, summary I'll, point. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm yeah, going to give it I'll, over. I'll, to I'll take that point. Yeah. I need to make one point and then I hand it back over to you. Martin's point is <clears throat> that not all Christians who would call themselves evangelical Christians who believe in the resurrection from the dead, um, because without that, you're not saved. Um, all, all Christians are not necessarily in agreement that what Genesis 1 and 2 is really teaching is that um, is that Adam is it there's some Christians who think that Adam wasn't necessarily the first man because um, where did the where did the wives for for Adam's children come from and stuff like that so I'm just pointing out that well, yes there are I, there are people who who believe that all right and so that's Martin's point all right now okay Kevin take it away okay so let, let's talk about that for a quick there's two things I want to speak about that and that is number one is we talk about where do where does whose wife Cain's wife or whoever the first lady was mentioned um, in the Bible where do they where they come from where does it, anybody have an answer for that because I do have an answer for that does anybody else have an answer for that because suddenly you have Cain or Cain or was it Cain married someone and they had children where did that woman come from well, the, uh, it obviously I've heard, was some I've, I've, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard that I've heard that they had more children. Adam and Eve had more children and so actually they were marrying their sisters. <laughs> okay. 
So let's let's put that into in perspective there. Let's get our mind shift because that's exactly what happened. Adam was the perfect man. And we'll prove in a minute, I'm going to get to science deeply, that shows that evolution is impossible. And this is the new science. And within five years, maybe this 10 years, it will, get to the, it will get to the masses. But let me just first all share with this with you. Science has proven without any doubt, and you can, you can read this up. It's not, I'm, not, I'm not going to be doing this this week, but that cells can live for over a thousand years. Now, the thing is, Adam was a perfect human being. And that's when entropy starts. Perfect, uh, perfect sperm. He had the whole seed of the whole human race in him. Black, white, all the variants. There's some that ad adapted to their environments, with this, which is a natural adaptation as variations. But, so, but a lot of the genes within uh, the, the sperm of Adam had everybody in it. And it was perfect. No toxins. If he went for a medical checkup, it would be absolutely perfect perfect there is absolutely nothing inside him then it's going to cause mutations no mutations or extremely rare not even one in a million <clears throat> so when in the first i don't know how many years i'm not i'm not going into that because that is also being uh, uh, shown how many years and i'll show you the entrepreneur entropy in a minute but the um for the first so many hundreds or even thousands of years where well, two uh, hundreds of years we have perfect sperm and it's quite believable if we take our belief system off of this of this about inbreeding because it had to happen inbreeding could not happen later on in life because the genes were too messed up and too mutated uh, not mutations uh, mutations and of course toxins and everything else in there so at the perfect human being they were having children at a hundred years old and children at 25 years old, and the sisters didn't even know their brothers. I'm saying they met in the village and they fell in love, and that was it. Whatever, whatever. I don't know. I'm not romanticizing in that, but they didn't even know them. So sisters and brothers absolutely could to, could could uh, reproduce and marry. Not a problem whatsoever. The only reason they're not in this world is because of the inmating causes massive, huge problems. And I'll show you this why uh, later on in, in the entrepreneur um, slides. So that is where women came from. Yep, absolutely. They were inbreeding, and that's a bad word, of course, in our day, day and time, but in those days, it was perfection. There was no uh, degeneration of genes in that time that they could, they could see, scientists could see, because um, they weren't even there then, but if they were. So that takes that. Now, the other thing is I'd like to explain is where are evolution scientists, Christian scientists, where Christian scientists, like yourself, Martin, where is, where are we going to have a miracle? What do you believe about miracles? Because you cannot separate science and your belief. You cannot do it because there's so much to be said in there. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to shift that miracle to back to a miracle of beginning of life. So we're sifting it out there. So it's kind of blind. It's a little tiny cell, you know, a little bit of electricity by God and we have life. That's impossible. Okay, stop. I, I can show, I can wait, show wait, you. Wait, 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 wait. Um, hey, Marty, you, you, you muted me and you can't mute me. Okay. I, I'm the, I'm the moderator, even though Kevin is leading. All right. So Kevin, I don't understand something because um, you're, uh, my understanding of Genesis, right. as you read it, is that Adam and in, Adam and Eve sinned, and then they had two kids after that. So yes. the two kids that they had were sinful children. Correct. But there's no. There's, but there's still. A, but it's, only, it's only less than not even a generation apart. I mean, they're perfect sperm. You can't just because there's a sin. Yes, we're all built into sin. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about perfection of the human sperm at that time. So oh, I, I'm not following you. I, I so don't. I don't basically, get the significance that, of this. Basically, oh, because, basically, the, the the idea is that because Adam had a perfect genome, and that he didn't start undergoing entropy until after he sinned, therefore any deviation from the perfect genome was relatively small when he first had kids, and then you know oh, his kids years. could 
could all intermarry and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And interbreeding only really matters. The, the idea, this is not a scientific idea. This is a, a point of speculation. Um, but the, the idea is that, okay, if you don't have any mutations or if you have very few mutations, then inbreeding is not really much of a problem because there's no bad mutations to get from inbreeding. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I mean, it's not to do with sin. It's not to do with sin. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, all that you're saying is is that there's nothing there's nothing to say that that Adam and Eve didn't make other children that then became the wives of Cain and Abel. That's your point. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. It was a normal thing. All right. Thing. All right. Well, yeah. When I say I that, you. yeah. Okay. The science has shown that science has shown that that wouldn't be a problem with perfect. Uh, uh, no toxins. Okay, so my my second point was we are trying to shift the miracle. What happens to the miracles for evolu for Christian scientists who believe in illusion? What happened? We're shifting the miracle from the uh, miracle of breathing breath into <coughs> one man and 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 forming him from the earth and producing perfection. This will all come to light when I talk about the entropy in a minute. And then shifting it from there to the miracle of um, long ago, far, far away, we can't see it, millions of years, where one single cell was formed and life formed. I'm going to show you that's also impossible. To, and that's scientific, science now has shown, the science is so far advanced from 15 years ago that we can actually prove, and it has been proven, and Dawkins actually, dinosaur Dawkins, I call him, has actually changed his own theory of that so that is gone that that and what they're now saying but but christian scientists could say well god seeded the life there he made the miracle there but why not make the miracle here it's just it's, it's even it's even more unbelievable to seed it from there than to here well, so I, I think where does the miracle what, what, I, I, where, where does the miracle come where's there I, where is there room for miracle in, in in the evolution theory so if you're if you're talking to a christian who's also accepting the scientific data. I don't think the issue is No, so no, much... no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that, Martin. I accept scientific data. Okay, and well, you'll see whatever, many, many scientists right now. Accepting the, the general framework of the theory of evolution. The, uh, absolutely. I think that the issue, the issue is not like whether miracles could happen, but it's just a matter of like, what, what does the evidence, what sort of progression of things does the evidence point to? Right. And I think I think it actually has a lot more to do with the interpretation of Genesis than anything else. Um, I think it, it it does have some to do with with the, the scientific evidence as well. So I I, I I'm not so like I, I, I don't necessarily think that um, the, the way the argument is being framed is like the actual discussion that would be going anyway, let on. Let me go on because I've, I've got to back this up with, I'm backing this up with some science as well. Yeah. Okay. So, but before we go on to the science, because I want to get into the science now, before we do that, I still want to take you through a hypothesis because science is about hypothesis. And we talked about this quite a lot last week, but I'm going to go back to it because it's very, very, it's very basic. Evolution was invented. This is the hypothesis. Even, well, um, explaining it, evolution was invented by atheists with the hypothesis grounded in one main condition. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about belief now as well. Main condition, and that is belief, a belief, strong belief that there is no supernatural power, no super, supernatural intelligence, no, be, no supernatural being or God. Now, <clears throat> That is what they believe. That's a faith-based science. Evolutionists, don't, they, they say, well, when I, when I say that to some evolutionists, well, that's a, you're, that's a faith. They will tell me, oh, you're twisting my words. I just don't believe in God. Well, if you don't believe in God, you do believe that there is no God. So it's not twisting words. That is the absolute truth. It's a belief and it's faith-based. So when they come across... And this is going to, I'll show you, uh, this is 
I'll be showing you this in science as well. But when, so when evolution non-believers go into the science and they come across a problem, instead of saying, I don't know, but with the freedom of having creation, of creating another hypothesis, they can't make another hypothesis. They have to go down another route and they have to form an, a, a hypothesis with no evidence and say that is true. And they believe in that. So this is exactly what happens. Um, and it happened last week when you said, Martin, the hypothesis that uh, the uh, bones support the main hypothesis, that is now saying, well, we haven't found them yet. If I came to a science class and said to the to professor, here's my, here's my hypothesis, oh, yeah. I haven't found any evidence yet, but I know it's true, so I will find it. You, I'd be kicked out of class, it's a belief. And that's what's happening in all these pillars that I shared with you right now. And I'm gonna share with you now the pillar of pillars of geological columns, mutation, and evolution from, uh, from low energy to higher energy, from low order to higher order. And each okay, one so of those will be broken down. So we, we can't jump into a whole major section like that until we have time for discussion yeah. on, on, on that. So I, I want to do a brief summary, and then I want discussion about this. So Kevin's saying that, uh, that evolution, or as he says in his British accent, evolution, that <clears throat> evolution <clears throat> is is um, coming from atheists, and and it's an uh, it's coming from atheists. Darwin was an atheist with an atheist agenda, and it's it's an atheistic belief because it leaves God out of the miraculous creative process. Am I correct on those two points, Kevin? Yeah. Uh, 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 okay, and then. But then he's, he said a third thing, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seemed to me for, for you to be saying that everybody who then purports to believe in evolution then is an atheist. Now, did you mean to say that? Because that's what I heard. Oh, no, no, I didn't say that. I'm saying uh, uh, they're not taking that into account, so they've been deluded. Evolution Christians are deluded because, because of the, I mean, 99% of the population believe in evolution. Why? Because they were taught it as fact at school. It's in our, it's, it's in our, it's in bred, inbred into us that we have to believe this. It's true. So whenever we talk about science, even you, Pastor Tim, last week said it, it's natural, it's normal. Oh, if we, if we believe in science... Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, I don't remember saying that. I don't know what you're purporting me to I'm telling you now what, what you said. I'm letting, I'm letting you know. There was, when, no, I'm just saying that when we talk about science... It's like evolution is the science, but creationism is the science as well. But what is, what is known to be true is evolution because that's what we taught as fact. And so we slip into this easy, well, if science is true, then we can't believe, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but you didn't say that, well, I know. Uh, yeah. So it's very, please, it's, please it's, don't a, make it's a paradigm. It's a paradigm. It's a paradigm. What I say, because well, I don't want to be quoted saying that. And, and, no, you didn't, and I'm not, you didn't say that, yeah. no. Yeah, so, I'm not even sure it's an accurate expression of what I believe. Uh, for for the sake of conversation, uh, yeah. can we just refer to the science, the 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 general scientific consensus? We that's it's the scientific consensus. It, granted, you can have alternative theories. Um, it's not the scientific consensus now. I'm bringing you up to date. No, but I'm saying for most. I'm saying if most of the scientists, regardless of their faith or religion, atheist or not, are saying that this is the consensus about the theory, then that's the, that's what we call scientific consensus. So that, that I, I, not, like you can you can have true. alternative scientific theories, but if that's not the consensus of the day, then that's not the consensus of the day. It's, it's only the consensus of the day because the population have been told it's fact. The consensus of uh, I, modern scientists is not that consensus. Well, whether people were taught it or they believe it, it it's irrelevant, right? If that's yeah, yeah, the okay, consensus, so then that's irrelevant. the consensus, yeah. right? What so, I'm saying is that is you know it's it's basically be, uh, uh, be, that, then and you're to ask, basically ask asking answering to Pastor Tim's question that the majority of the the evolution. Christians, they're not atheists, they're still Christians, 
but they are, and, and I'll show you this in a, in a minute, if, if I can share my screen, I'll show you and exactly what I mean, because this man explains it a lot better than I can. Um, and he was an atheist, a uh, diehard atheist before. So well, let me explain I'm not, that. Because I'm not trying to get anybody to agree to any points. I'm just trying to establish terminology here, because I think it's intellectually disingenuous to act like there isn't some sort of consensus on the current, what people would call evolutionary I, theory. I totally agree. That's if you want to have a yeah. different theory, you can't call it the same thing because that's confusing the issue. Does that make sense? So, yeah. so if you don't agree with the conclusions of the theory or the interpretation of the data, or you don't agree with the theory just because you think it's based on too many fundamental assumptions, et cetera, et cetera, that's fine. I, that's not the, the, the point I'm trying to make. I'm just trying to say that, that this, this like trying to get some sort of authoritative backing about the science, like theoretically it's possible that 99% of the people are wrong. So it's not outside the realm of possibility. And that's what you're okay. saying. And that's what like you're saying yeah. these Christian scientists who have a different theory of what happened are saying is that the interpretations are wrong. They're based on underlying assumptions, which are incorrect. Right. So, but okay. for terminology's sake, we have to like, we, we can't act like there isn't somehow general consensus of the general framework of, of evolution and how the data is being interpreted sure. because as, as okay. far as yeah, i know just, there's been no it's a small radical point, Mark, changes Martin. on that let's move on it's a small point i just wanted to point it out that's the that's the general consensus that people believe in evolution as a fact and it's not that's what i'm saying and you also okay. Yeah, yeah. okay wait 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 okay um all right so can we agree that many people believe evolution because it's taught as a fact to them as a scientific fact in school are we all agreed on that point i i don't agree on that wording i don't agree on that wording at all um and i think the wording does matter and i don't think it's a small point so i know that's know. why i'm trying to focus it so what what, what do you not agree with uh, people uh, people case. people agree with the general framework of the theory of evolution based on the evidence and no, they don't the you're general... talking about scientists martin okay Not I'll, just, I'll just stop talking then because you know what i'm going to say so I, I didn't finish my sentence based on the evidence and the interpretation of the evidence okay so the theory is a general framework there are some underlying um, assumptions that that have to be made scientists would call these extrapolations right mm -hmm. So yes, like there are, we don't have perfect knowledge. We don't have a time machine. We don't have video recordings of hundreds of millions of years ago or 100,000 years ago or the beginning of the universe or whatever. Um, the, like, I, I think, you know, the words matter, right? So it's not that people were taught to believe something. It's that the evidence was laid out and the, the discussions were had about the, the natural processes, and most people reached a general consensus of, hey, you know, whether there's a God or not, it seems like this is the progression of what happened. This is what the data looks like. This is how we're dating things. This is how we're organizing the information, and this is our interpretation of it. And, and I think to, to kind of, I, I, I think it's kind of like, getting into trying to say that all you know you have to be an atheist or there's somehow inherently atheistic beliefs uh completely wrapped up in in the science interpretation i i'm not so okay. sure about that because you wouldn't describe physics the laws of physics observationally derived you wouldn't describe those as uh you know god doing something actively or maybe you would so it gets into like if Christians just fundamentally have a different way of doing science and describing the natural processes, which we can observe. And that's, I think, you know, a, a poignant, a poignant discussion like to have about like, can Christians even like, cause the ramifications of this are like, can Christians uh, be Christian and do science in the secular world? Or do they have to, have a different way of conducting science or a different way of interpreting the data, 
right? Okay, Martin, we're we're, we're getting we're getting way, way okay, too Martin, far away. Um, I, I, I'm I'm just trying to clarify what it was that Kevin said. Okay, that's all I'm trying to do. All, all right. So well, um, then you ask everybody me a question. Understand? Then you asked me a question on it. So we were talking about something else. Uh, Mar okay. Marty, okay, that's just, just like a, Kevin, just like Kevin finished his presentation without yeah, interruption. Yeah. Okay. The reason that would be nice is because the, what you've been saying right now, I'm, I, I don't want to even comment on because I, it will be explained as I go through the presentation. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to show you okay. that even atheists are now contemplating intelligence. Mm -hmm. And even Dawkins, his theory now is the alien concept. I'm not sure if you know this. Dawkins has now said that he believes or he believes it could be possible because we can't produce those in physics, chemistry or anything, produce a cell. It's been shown it's highly improbable. And as we spoke about last week, uh, highly improbable in science means impossible. It's like tossing a coin a thousand times and it comes up heads. So it's highly improbable okay. that can happen. In Dawkins has said the alien uh, the alien, um, the alien uh, theory, and that is where an alien has come from another universe, an opposite universe, who's highly, highly intelligent, and he has seeded life in uh, on Earth, and then let it let, let it take its course. The deist theory is that God, the deist God, internal inside the universe, did the same thing and seeded life, and then left it up to evolution. And I'm going to show you okay. now the only hypothesis that works to for physics and maths to be true now is the Jewish uh, God. And that is um, our God, because our God, because they've now proven that there is a beginning. That was not a proven science before. <laughs> uh, science was saying well, in, the, in the 17th century, 18th century, it was saying that the universe has had existed for 50,000 million years or 50,000 mm -hmm. years or 70,000 years. They now know, or, or for all time, the universe existed, and then God created everything in the universe. Well, that has been shown to be scientifically highly improbable, which is impossible. And um, I'm going a little bit too far, but I'm going to show you now what I've just said to you about the, uh, um, evolution atheists. And... You, to say that what I've just said is it's a atheist science that you can only believe in this science if you are an atheist. I'm not saying all Christian, uh, uh, all Christian evolutionists are, not, are atheists. I said you have to be, if you want to really believe in this, you have to be an atheist because it's totally contradicting everything. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to lay that out to you. They're not just words. I'm going to lay. This is the podcast sorry, um, video of James Tour, who's a physicist, um, and Jan, Jan, John Sanford, who's a genetic entrepreneur, genome generate, degeneration. This is going to be about, um, and just listen to what he says, because he was an atheist before, and he believed, and this is what happens, as we spoke about last week, or the week before, um, scientists of different disciplines go into their science believing evolution is true and assuming that everything that was done before was checked and studied and cr crossed off as the, the, the consensus of a majority of science. And that's what he thought until he started to study himself. And then he talked to his evolution, hard evolutionist uh, atheists as well as him. He was sp speaking freely with them and let him explain what happened. On. My first question to you is... Can you hear that? No. No? Before. I just want to make sure you're hearing the sound. No. I hear nothing. I can hear it. Uh, I, I don't know if he's... Can you hear it now? You are, you are a scientist, yet uh, oh, I can hear you now. believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, I presume. And if that's indeed true, how can you as a scientist believe something so amazing as a physical resurrection of a human being like Jesus. Okay, so uh, there was a time when I was a hardcore atheist. And so actually I've, I've gone from a hardcore atheist to a romantic atheist 
to a theistic evolutionist to an old earth creationist. And now I'm um, fully surrendered to the word of God. So I'm, I have to defend something quite difficult, which is actually young earth creationism. But um, uh, the, we, the question we, uh, of how percent. can scientists believe in the supernatural no. is um, actually easily answered. Most of humanity is, is, um, believes in the material world and earthly uh, things, and at the same time believe in the supernatural. So uh, there are very few true atheists who deny any type of spiritual dimension. And so uh, I'd say that most scientists are in fact supernaturalists. They acknowledge there's something beyond just matter and energy. And so the question isn't really, um, can we believe in the supernatural? The question is, how do we filter out the supernatural from superstition and, uh, and different forms of uh, misinformation? So coming back to specifically to Christ, um, Christ is, um, the gospel of Christ is incredibly coherent and it resonates to anyone who has an open heart and open mind. Well, I agree. And, and uh, he's the son of God and he rose from the dead. And there is a huge amount of historical information that backs that up. And, uh, and, and I know some people like to discuss it as if, as if it were a myth, but uh, um, they haven't looked into the historical evidence of the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let me, let me, start painting a picture to give a give give now just 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 the tapestry upon which we're gonna we're, we're gonna deal today if you just think of biological systems they are so complex the levels of system engineering in a cell is just amazing and then you get into a whole organism that is made up of of, of uh, thousands upon thousands upon millions of cells the 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 complexity is is just so great and now uh, the, the question then exists, how did all this come about? And the standard answer to this question is what's, what you call in your book, you call this the primary axiom, random mutations filtered by natural selection. And so that is the common paradigm. All of this came about through random mutations filtered by natural selection. And your book, Genetic Entropy, just takes that concept head on. And, uh, and so tell us, tell us uh, uh, about, about this primary axiom and, uh, and what happened when you started to dissect it. Just paint for us this picture now. Okay, the primary axiom uh, is considered the fundamental foundation of many scientists' um, worldview. And so they're convinced it's true, even if they're not in the fields of science that are relevant. So a lot, of, for example, you might be in a, in a field that has absolutely nothing to do with biology, but you've been trained to believe that uh, all life derives from this process of mutation and selection. And so um, I was there and I was very convinced but I wasn't actually, I hadn't actually studied the issue for myself. So it wasn't until I was um, 50 years old and uh, when I started to actually examine, does Darwinian process actually work? And one of the first things I discovered was that there were many people uh, in the area of population genetics who were acknowledging that the basic mechanism mutation selection has huge problems. And I was so surprised uh, to learn that. And I think, well, why haven't I heard that? And it's because the people who say that um, kind of have a low profile when they say that because they know that if that mechanism doesn't work, then evolution doesn't work. And so you can't have uh, just natural process creating higher and higher forms of life. And so it was um, a revelation for me to realize uh, that the Darwinian mechanism was vulnerable. So Dar the Darwinian mechanism is simply uh, 
natural variation plus natural selection. And that's been uh, a better term as, as Mendelian genetics was um, Uh, when you'd like to do that, if you'd like to, okay? Okay, if you don't mind, I'd like to do that now. Uh, the, the first thing I'd like to say, Jim, is that um, all of these debates that involve apologetics and attacks on the Christian faith um, have to do with not what we believe, but who we believe. And so basically the issue is uh, the authority of God versus the authority of man. So if you have atheists who believe there's no God, then of course they believe whatever human authority says. But um, for those of us who have an open heart and mind to the things of God, we realize that God's authority trumps any, any um, human uh, construct, it trumps the claims of human authority every time. So that's, uh, that, that basically means that our apologetic argument is secondary. First and foremost, we are saved because we believe. And as God says in several places in scripture, Abraham believed God and God counted it to him as righteousness. So I just want to make it clear that um, the scientific arguments we're going to go through are secondary. So I actually have three books, four books out now Genetic entropy was the first one, and we'll talk about that. Second one was um, I um, organized a, a large symposium at Cornell when I was still uh, there, and it involved biological information. And the question was, where does biological information come from? And there were 29 high-level scientists and 25 scientific papers presented at that symposium, and the unanimous consensus was that biological information only comes through intelligence. You can't get biological information or biological information systems or biological networks um, apart from intelligence. So uh, does anybody understand what you're saying there? You're saying that in in information equals intelligence. And um, the scientists there all said the same thing. They believe that, and, and there's twenty. There's so many twenty or twenty-four, couple of dozen scientific papers that were put in and passed after rigorous testing, after rigorous, uh, you know, checking. So that's the first point. And so that's a very significant publication. It took an enormous amount of work. It's not. I'm not going to discuss it anymore, except to say that life is programmed and the programming exceeds anything that computer scientists can program today. The third one is Contested Bones, and we may talk about it briefly, but this book was um, developed by Christopher Roop, a common friend of ours, and myself representing four to five years of work. It really uh, brings together uh, a clear understanding of what the hominin bones really are. To save time, I'm gonna try and Take it to another part. Recording in progress. Let's go to that. Crisis. We realized we had to address it. So we might talk about that very briefly, but it's basically a warning to the world that we are facing the greatest humanitarian crisis in history. And it is what we call the sexual holocaust. Okay, um, the last book is in progress on transitional forms, and it's relevant to the contested bones, but we look at also claims that there are intermediates between uh, wolf-like creatures and whales and that sort of thing. So there's actually six books of interest. We're gonna focus now just on the genetic entropy. So I'm just going to uh, begin by showing the graph that you mentioned earlier. Um, we usually don't think that the Bible has scientific data in it, but it, there is uh, one set of data in the Bible which is clearly um, scientific and very, very interesting. It has to do with how long people lived starting from Noah 
and to the present. Uh, the nine generations before Noah and Noah were all living, people were living to be over 900 years old, according to scripture. And we're gonna look at the scriptural evidence and then the genetic evidence. But scripturally speaking, uh, we can plot the lifespan of the patriarch versus how many generations since Noah. And what we see is uh, that uh, Noah lived to be 950 years old, but his son, Shem, poor guy, died at only 600, and that a few generations later, Abraham died at 175, and a few generations after Abraham, Moses died at 120, and uh, a number of generations after Moses, King David died 70. I can relate to that. I just turned 70. And uh, lastly, uh, the average Roman citizen um, longevity was 45 years. So um, what we see here is an incredible biological decay curve. And uh, it's stunning. And uh, it, it, it turns out the, the, the main players of the Bible uh, fall exactly on the same line. And that uh, the other, all the other patriarchs uh, recorded in the Bible, where we have the lifetime, their lifespan, uh, all fall very tightly on that. So the Bible seems to be clearly indicating that mankind as a whole is degenerating systematically. Now, we now live longer than the average Roman citizen, but that's not because the trend has been reversed. It's because now we have better nutrition and we have uh, less violence and we have less um, and we have um, modern medicine. But if you if we took away all the all the things we have that give us a longer life, we would probably be in the 30s or 40s in terms of average lifespan, including um, from children to adult. So it's just an amazing piece of information comes straight from the Bible. I invite you to plot it for yourself. As you can see at the bottom, there's a, a website you can go to, logosra.org. There's an article on it documenting all the numbers and showing that this is a real thing. So um, we, beginning with scripture uh, late in the last century, again, uh, he said, no human geneticist doubts that man is now degenerating. And so Dr. Crow, a famous scientist of the last century, wrote a paper uh, late in the last century in Science, a top journal. And he said, we're inferior to caveman, and our fitness is declining at a 1% to 3% rate per generation. And so um, Dr. Lynch, we're going to speak a little bit about him uh, as we go. but. He's perhaps the best known population geneticist alive today. He says we're degenerating at one to five percent per generation per generate uh, and uh, that was published in Proceedings of National Academy of Science. So um, many other geneticists acknowledge the problem, and my book in the appendix lists many of those people. So it looks like it's real. As I studied this problem, I, uh, I asked myself, what biological experiment can I do that would let me validate the theoretical evidence for genetic decline and what would validate the biblical evidence? And my colleague, Rob Carter, and I decided to study the H1N1 influenza virus, which caused the great no, we can actually see the mutations accumulating within that virus. And here's the question, does the, fit, the, does the fitness go up or down? So by the way, this paper this is a major journal program. And we're going to compare that to the influenza data, okay? So here's the data from our simulations uh, when we use realistic, biologically realistic uh, numerical simulations. And the upper graph is a straight line. This is the mutation. So I'm going to go a little bit faster on this because it, is, it goes a bit slow. What he's saying is he's, he's now showing uh, on the numerical simulations about this entropy, entropy that he's shown, the Bible is showing through man and his genetic uh, de degeneration. Um, 
and he's showing in the, in the numerical simulation, you get a perfectly um, straight line when you're coming to mutation increase. And you have this curve that's similar to the, what the Bible showed of the um, decline of uh, as a simulation. And then he goes on to show the same thing in influenza, which is a bio biological system that we, we, we can uh, test because we can't test it on humans, of course. So let's go on. So he's taking quite a long time. Um, so let's go to there. I'll share what he says. Basically, the influenza data shows the mutation increase on this line, which is very, very similar to this line. And this is the influenza um, decline as it came out of the population and then went extinct. It took many years, but that's the curve. And then another version of, this, of the same virus, and then another version of the same virus. It's exactly what's happening now with the coronavirus. Uh, sorry, the, uh, yeah, this, the, our new virus, whatever that is, I can't even remember. Um, and um, one of the scientists I've just heard about two days ago on the television from the BBC was saying, um, a scientist was brought on, on the TV and saying, this, this Omniron uh, virus is a cleansing virus. It is probably the best thing that can happen to humankind. And uh, the government has got wrong advice about this. It is so prolific um, and very not, not lethal that if everybody caught it, the whole thing would, 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 would come into this entropy very much quicker. And anyway, so that's just a bit of a, a, a theory or a, a science on the latest stuff. So what he's saying is that every single model that is shown agrees with the Bible. And this is now showing the, the Bible, the theory, the simulation, and the influenza. There's the Bible. There's the numerical. There's the, um, the uh, numerical. And there is the actual. Oh, sorry, the declining fitness, sorry, and um, the mutation count. Okay, so it, everything is, 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 is showing. And he put these papers in. And let, let me show you. Viral systems. Why did we use a virus system? Because we don't have a few thousand years to do the experiment on the human population. But the bottom line is uh, all the evidence at all levels support that things should be going down, not up. And there are a lot of scientists who are scratching their head and saying, it seems right, but it can't be true. Why not? Because we know Darwinian evolution is true. And that was my point, Martin. That's exactly my point. He is talking to scientists who are scratching their heads and saying this is irrefutable, and yet we don't, we can't, we still believe in the Darwinian. Uh, that is not science anymore. That is question. total faith and hold on, Martin. That what, is total faith and belief. Which graphs? Which book are these graphs in? Entropy. Where is he? The genetic entropy book. Yep, all the papers. Um, you know, I, I still haven't people. finished. I still haven't re finished reading that book, but I. It's okay. They are there. The papers I, are there. He's just spoken about it, and what he's saying is what I was saying before, and that is that this is a faith-based belief and not a science. That's what I'm saying. People are going to ignore the uh, evidence, ignoring the evidence, and saying, "Well, this is crazy, but it's okay because we know that Darwin is true." And that is the problem with science. The, the science has been broken because of this, because there is no other way out. Because if they start to believe in God, they have, do not have a science. And that's the problem. And that's what I was trying to, to uh, alludiate to. Now, if, you, if I go on, and I'm going to give you this, uh, this um, video to everybody. And if you go on, you'll hear what he says when he spoke to his ex, well, they're still friends, but he's now a, a Christian, of course, this scientist, John Stanford. And of course, he's, all his colleagues before are still there, his friends who, are, who have stayed in the, uh, the evolution and the um, atheist uh, realm where he was before. So he can speak to them. And he asks one person, um, because he's not getting any answers from people. And he's saying, why is everybody quiet? Why is the science establishment quiet? And he, and his John, uh, he spoke to his friend, and he said, Peter, or whatever his name is, he said, have you read my book? Have you seen the evidence? Have you seen the scientific studies and all the papers I put in? And it has not been refuted. Not one, not one challenge, not one contest, just silence. And his friend Peter said, yeah, I read it twice. He said, and there's nothing wrong with it.
that is absolutely irrefutable what you've said. But, he said, we are just, the reason why there's silence is because they do not know what to do with it. They cannot handle it. They don't know what the, the consequences are too, too enormous. And he said, but we are waiting. We are going to see that one day we will see why these are wrong. We still believe in Darwinian. If that's not, that is not science, that is not sharing a, a hypothesis that has not proof, we've got evidence against it, and they're not putting it down. And the, I believe that is because, of course, they can't. And it will take generations for this to get through because of human beings. There are scientists still alive and people who've had their lives based on this lie, based on this theory, based on this faith, that they, 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 their whole life is based on teaching this. Attenborough, you know, he's a famous figure and he, he'll be seen to be wrong. How can he go, you know, it, it's, just, it's just too enormous to be able to come down to the level of any acceptance yet, and it will take a long time. But this has been given to them. It's been given to them. It is the science today. It's the science of today. And this absolutely squashes all of evolution as it sounds now. And that's one of the pillars I wanted to bring down because it's the last one. In fact, I've jumped two steps. Evolution shows that we have to evolve from a lower and uh, from a high energy more energy to a uh, sorry a high energy to a lower energy uh, sorry a high a low energy to a high energy things have to evolve from low order to a higher order high entropy to lower entropy which is impossible he's just shown this it's impossible evolution is impossible that's the that's the last pillar um, it actually trumps the mutation the mutation I was going to show you in science, previous science already refutes that. And of course, the geological columns we can go into if you want to. But um, I wanted well, to get that in because um, it shows a lot. I, I, think, I think you got to be uh, careful about misconstruing some of the laws of ther thermodynamics when you, when you make those statements. So. Okay, we can go into thermodynamics right now because that was going to be next week. But if you want to, I can bring in thermodynamics. Well, thermodynamics. no, I'm just so can, please correct me if I'm wrong, but are you saying that your primary argument is based on uh, John Sanford's book? And Not just his, John Sanford. His, I'm talking. I um, uh, no, no. There's there's a whole realm of. Uh, there's more I can show you. Um, uh, Stephen Mayer has shown the, the, um, the aging of the universe. The aging of the universe is not millions. It shows that the whole universe is not millions. It's more like seven, four, four to 7,000 years old. So astrophysicists, the astrophysicist, atheist, diehard atheist, self-confessed, he oh. has said, he has said this. I, I, I don't really want to go into that because we were talking about John Sanford and his studies and the graphs he's yeah, giving. Yeah, you just asked me if um, there's anybody else. It's not, I saw just on this. This so is you're, just you're, one, of, one of hundreds. When you were making the statement that this is modern science and that this is irrefuted. Less than two years. And you're talking about, you're, you're talking about refuting um, this, this idea that mutations can result in uh, development yep. of species of new yep. order and new complexity. You're yep. saying that that is refuted. Yes. And, and that's you're, the, the, you're the, science, that, the scientists agree. So, so, what, okay. So you're saying that's refuted because of these studies or these studies and additional studies. Of course, additional studies, but this study has shown and has been agreed by other scientists, evolution scientists, this, as I said, they're scratching their head. If this is true, then evolution can't be true. Things are in evolution. Things are going like this, but in actual entropy, it's going like this. So that's the that's the conclusion. And so the atheist scientist. This is up to date modern science. So this shows, and it's irrefutable. It's not being challenged, or uh, in fact, his friend said to him, yeah. "You know, this is what you put here is irrefutable." 
but we still believe in Darwin and we'll wait. So they believe in just like the, human, the, 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 the missing link in the bones. They believe it will be found one day, just like you said last week. Well, I, it's, I, you know. I haven't finished reading the book, but I, I've already found quite a number of, of uh, counter issues well, with... No with, one else has, Martin. No other scientists... Oh, there's a lot of respect. other scientists have. So no, I, he, I don't he, think it's I don't think it's uh, correct to say that there's been okay, no critique you, yeah, of his yeah, book. Okay, I, I think you there's been a lot of critique. If you saw proof of it, that you ought to be flexible. This Wait, is science. Hey, hey, everybody, stop for a minute. Stop. Stop for a minute. Um, <clears throat> I want to point out something that's going on, Kevin. You're making overstatements, and every time you make an overstatement, it trips up Martin. Uh, uh, okay, like when you say things like. Um, you know, scientific consensus or all the scientists are now believing this or, or the things like that. <clears throat> this this is part of... of no, they're what, not believing it, Pastor Tim. They are scratching their heads and well, realizing uh, that if this is true, this, you know, and they can't refute the, the evidence. Mm -hmm. They can't refute the papers. That's what I'm saying. Well, uh, okay. Um, that, it's not the facts that you're presenting that, that, I'm, that I personally am having a problem with. It's statements like that because um, I know scientists who are not going where you say uh, all the scientists are, are going. So, well, what what I would prefer that the language that be that that's used is some scientists are now seeing it this way or are are wrestling with it or or what or what whatever. It's just it's the overarching um, impossible to verify. Uh, quantifiable well, statements that you're making that's without without um, enough journals to back it up that that is that is in my mind undermining my ability to accept some of the things that you're trying to present okay well you know um, it when 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 papers are put in dozens of papers are put in not challenged and they're accepted by the <coughs> scientific establishment it becomes a consensus Yes, I, I, absolutely. But I don't right. see that happening. But if I can, Where's if it? I can demonstrate that people didn't have consensus on these papers, then it refutes your point. And so, that's what I'm saying. So those those things are listen. Those things are out from the purview of what we can do in such a limited time frame. So what we have to do is is we have to okay. keep it focused on listen. So so hang on, listen to me. We can't go there, Kevin. Martin, we can't go there in reputation. What we have to okay. do is, is we have to simply say there are some in the scientific community who have gone down this route, okay? Because it's this, it's this quantifiable stuff that is triggering the arguments and the counter arguments and, and everything. And it's not necessary for our discussion, people. What we want okay. to do in, in this discussion, and let's not lose the forest for the trees. And Kevin, you got a lot of trees in your forest, okay? <clears throat> Let's not lose the trees, which is that there are certain main tenets, okay, that, that you're, these pillars that, that you're talking about. And <clears throat> I just want to make sure that everybody is on board with the argument per se, not how many people are believing it right now versus how many police how many people stop believing it, but let's, I'm just not even sure that we're all on base with understanding what it is you said about the entropy stuff and everything, because it is important. It's hugely important. So what I'd like you to do is clarify the point you've just made and then open it up for discussion with someone other than Martin and me um, about questions and comments. And then Kevin, you be the one, not Martin, to answer the, the, the question. So summarize it first, Kevin, and then ask and make sure that everybody understands because you made some very, very important points here. Okay. Mm. Mm. So summarize them and then ask for questions. The summary is that um, if evolution is true, it's the word evolution. You're evolving from, um, uh, if evolution is true, then you're evolving from low entropy to high entropy. Sorry, mm -hmm. high entropy, high entropy to low entropy, which means this entropy is the breaking down. So according to the Bible, let's go to the Bible because I can explain it better there. If if Adam is the perfect man, he's at very, very low entropy, very low breakdown. And that breakdown becomes higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. As you can see on this graph on the top left, the breakdown is dramatically like that. 
So the breakdown, the G degeneration of the genes, the degeneration is a breakdown. So entropy shows that you can't go the other way. You can't go from uh, low entropy, um, uh, low entropy to high, uh, high entropy, sorry, to low entropy. You can't go that way. You've got to come from here to there. It won't go the other way. Evolution is saying that it's going that way because, because we've got us a cell which is evolving into a higher order and higher, 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 um, in, um, yeah, higher order, which is less entropy. You can't go from high to low entropy. Okay. Now, I'm not even sure people know what entropy is, so I want you to explain entropy that is again. Break, is, the, is the natural order of breaking down things. Everything is degenerating. So, everything. So this From is, day one, everything degenerates. Th this is so, factually, I think, Kevin, you're, you're factually incorrect on this because you're, but, you're, you're making a mistake about the second law of thermodynamics here. Okay, we can go into that but I'm not going to go into that right now, but I can show you on the thermodynamics. But I'm, I'm just saying degree. for a summary for people who don't know the laws of thermodynamics, uh, but I will can, show you, in you can the decrease the entropy of a system. Oh, okay. Yes. Let me, let, if you want to go into more deep then, okay, let me explain. No, we, we don't. We, we can't. Don't. Martin, Martin, I can go into not, it separately, but not this. I can't think. Yeah. Martin, please. It's too okay. deep. Yeah. But if, yeah. if somebody is saying like left is right and right is left and that's no, just I'm not saying untrue, that. then I have to, okay. I have to make a comment that that's to satisfy you on that. You're talking about a very different thing. You're not talking about life. What you're talking about does happen in nature. Let me explain to everybody in nature. You can go the other way around. You can go in. When I say nature, I'm talking about matter, not life. You can go from a, a, a windy day, which is, high entropy, disorder, down to order when you get a tornado. That is wonderful. Higher energy, lower entropy. So you're going from high entropy to lower entropy. And you're going from disorder to order suddenly. Because that is, a, that is what we call in science a duplication. It's like, if you're talking about coding, it's like 11111000. It's, it's repeating. 11110000. And it gets into a a, uh, a duplication. Now, matter can do that. But when you have information, and this is another point I was going to bring in, so I might as well explain it now. When you have information involved, that cannot happen. For example, if I dropped, if I had toothpicks in my hand and I dropped them on the floor, and the chances of a sentence like, Mary loves Peter with a heart sign, the, in, the probability of that happening in science is zero. <laughs> it's point zero 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 to a million, million, million zeros and one. It's just not going to happen. When a, if an alien came down from outer space and walked through a forest and saw a painting, Leonardo da Vinci painting, there is so much information in that picture that he would look around for the artist. Where's the artist who created this? In fact, if he looks at the trees, he could do the same thing. So much information here. Where is the creator of this? So what I'm okay, saying stop. is... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin, we've got to get back to... Um, <clears throat> you can't I'm answer to... Martin. Yeah, but Marty, you can't answer that. You can't get into that right now because we've got to just make sure that people are understanding his basic points and you're getting way too... Um, <clears throat> way too, you know... Uh, it, it's going beyond what, what, what we can do. Oh. We're, losing, we're losing the whole purpose for why we're having this, okay? And so I got to call this thing to order, all right? And what I'm trying to say is, Marty, um, yeah, you can debate with Kevin privately about whether or not he used the proper terminology for entropy versus second law of, of, of thermodynamics. But the basic point, I'm just trying to figure out, do people understand what Kevin said with the charts going down, Marty, it might be wrong. You might disagree with it, but that's not the issue. The issue is I'm trying to see if people understand the points that Kevin's making. Okay. So this is not, you know, this is not a challenge to Kevin at this point. All right. This is a Kevin gets his time to present it out. And then the purpose of the discussion is to understand things. And then if we want to have a free for all refutation 
uh, of everything. We can at the proper time, but that time is, is not when I'm asking for clarification and whether or not everybody is on board with understanding, all right? Because right now the discussion is centering around uh, Kevin and Martin and and me occasionally uh, j j jumping in. And, um, and that isn't what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be people who are who are basically normal people who don't have scientific degrees trying to understand what's the deal here. Can is number one, <clears throat> is evolution true and is it a fact? Number two, what is it really saying? And number three, <clears throat> is it a challenge to my faith? Okay, that's what we're trying to do. So right now, Kevin has explained uh, a reason why it is that evolutionary theory doesn't work because of the entropy thing. A am I correct, um, Kevin, yes. by saying that? Yes. Can I can I expand on that? Because John yes. Sanford is a professional, highly highly he knows about thermodynamics. He knows everything. And this is where I was a little bit afraid of because I am not a scientist of the depth of John Sanford. I am not saying this. He is saying this and he has put all the papers in. So he knows about thermodynamics. So I, I, I actually don't want that argument because you're not a, a specialist scientist in this. He, he is. He, he actually knows about thermo, thermodynamics probably more than both of us put together. So I don't really want to get into those arguments. Yes, you can put, I don't you want to. Uh, another time. I am not, it's not me that's saying this. This is John Sanford, who used to be a the, uh, an atheist, who used to be a evolutionist, checked it for himself scientifically, understands the thermodynamics more than both of us, and puts this together. Well, yeah, I okay. mean, his, his argument was different from how it was being phrased, though. I, Maybe I, I phrased it wrong. The, and the, we should, the, actually, the book is I want hard, to the, it's, it's very technical stuff in this book, and, and it's very easy to misconstrue like what he's saying. The, 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 the conclusion is the scientists, I might have got wrong where, what he says, yes. That's why I've played a lot of the, the video. But his book has got the conclusion. His book has put the papers in. They have been accepted by the scientific uh, community. So uh -huh. I am not questioning that. You can question it if you want to, but you'll have to go to his <coughs> book to do that and then present to us another time. But, but your point, I'm just trying to understand the points. Does everybody and Mark, this is for everyone else, okay? Does everybody understand the point that Kevin made about the entropy? You're saying that evolution um, goes uh, goes the against the the idea of entropy. Yeah, Absolutely. I understand. Okay, and I understand it, but um, you know, uh, it shows that evolution can go the other way. You can devolve, if you will, or you can evolve, uh, is the theory of evolution. So just because he showed that a virus devolves um, doesn't blow the whole theory out of the water, okay? The theory, and it is a theory, is a way of explaining the data that we have, which is is spotty with the, you know, the rock record. Um, you know, we've had to infer a lot with this theory. But it's a theory that works for, for now, okay? And science, if, the, if, if, if there's data that comes up that, ref, that requires another explanation, then, then the theory of evolution will have to evolve or just be dropped. Um, so, Kevin, in some ways, your enthusiasm actually gets in the way of your presentation. So it's, if we just want to talk about who's saying what and what they're saying I, in a calm way that I could really accept it. The, the way of this, the way of science is to debate. Okay. So that's what we're doing, but it's, it's obscuring in some ways, uh, a, 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 a concise and a concise explanation of all the points that you want to make. So it, I, I just, you know, I mean, we're not all going to go read this book. I got to tell you. So we're we're relying on, you know, what you're telling us. So I just say, you know, present it and and back off and let us try to try to deal with it. Okay. Yeah. That. Okay. Part so of what let I'm me. To. Okay, let me uh, explain that a little bit. Well, um, you don't need to read the book. You can just go through this. This, this is a very good, very good video. Um, but when you say it's a theory. It's actually bringing in what we know right now. Biological systems don't change. 
biological systems for for this it means it's it's it, 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 it extrapolates to other biological systems so it's not a theory it's absolutely true for for influenza and that is a biological system that's what john said john sanford was saying and which has been agreed by the scientific community so it's not just theory this is actual real life on the planet now no so i'm saying not... the evolution is a theory um yes yeah, evolution is a theory yes tim, tim said previously we were trying to find out if evolution is a fact well it's it's a theory that Correct. is accepted to explain uh, certain pieces of data that we have. That's that's what yeah. it is. Okay, that's what a yeah. theory is. So there's no right. saying yes or no. It's absolutely true. There's no absolute in this. Well, he showed. It, he just happened to show through um, modeling and experimentation, which is hmm. something other than faith-based. By the way, it's 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 a scientific process that this virus could decay. Let's say or uh, mutate downward rather than becoming some new life form, which is sort of the, what the theory um, of evolution says mm. could happen. Now, uh, because he did it for one virus, which is not, a, you know, we can't experiment on humans, um, but, or, or, you know, but just because it happened for a virus, which is an incomplete DNA uh, structure, doesn't mean that it, it holds through throughout <laughs> all of, all of the history of, well, of Earth, because there's been certain inputs of energy uh, that have been in the system um, in the past. Not, you know, he's assuming everything's held constant um, as far as energy inputs. So, I mean, you know, this is once again. I mean, just just present the just skim on the surface. You know, we don't need to. You know, just tell us what the arguments are against evolution. That's all, and then back off and let us kind of chew on that. Yeah, but I, I can't accept some of the things you said there, though, um, because it, it does does it does go to other systems. It does go to other other biological. That's why the that's why the scientists there were scratching their head because it does um, go to other sciences. But again, that's that's another a point um, that you're saying is an overall sweeping statement that that's that's just not science. So it could happen in other other biological systems. Is just not a scientific uh, statement. Um, sure. I, what I what I am trying to do is to what I am trying to do is to, what, to make either of the things that I've said what, or you're saying. What I I'm trying to do is to bring show you that it's not just science that's going on in the evolution. It is faith based, and and John Sandford clearly showed that when he was speaking to his friends, who said, "Yeah, there's problems with with what 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 we're seeing here evolutionists there's problems we can't be loud too loud about it because we know darwinian is true that is faith they actually have faith it's a faith that is true they that it has to be that way because if it wasn't that way um then these hypotheses would be taken down just like last week when we said there's no evidence to show a fossil of the the between the ape and the man but the answer was well we'll find it that is not science. I'm trying to get that across very strongly because it, it, it's, it's threatening um, our faith. And I'm not going to apologize for that, actually. Well, no, because no, that's no, what no, I'm no, trying no. to put across. It's, it is no, a faith-based no, no, yeah, and it's yeah, threatening yeah, okay. uh, our faith. Okay. Message received. Okay. Message received. Um, so what else? You know, I mean, there's other things we could go on okay, to. Okay. So I'm going to stop yeah, talking so, when other people talk. So... Just um, you know, let's let's see what they're what they're. You know, you can't argue with it with a scientist using um, faith uh, as far as God. Okay, you have to argue with them on their own territory. This is what Sanford has done. He's tried to show scientifically with his experiments with the um, the virus that I'm showing you something different from what you're used to seeing, and it may take a while for it to actually work its way through the scientific community. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, that's great, right? But, but we have to argue from the basis of science if we're going to try to convert anybody through. And, and I'll tell you what, most of the laymen, we're all mystified about all of this because we're not deep in the trenches with the science. So we need, a, we need a, something that we can come at them with, you know, that's, <laughs> that's more, more kind of a overall uh, 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 you I know, overall, def, you know, def, anyway, yeah, so I'll stop talking. Um, to, to go one step further uh, to 
let this discussion behind us. What do you think? What's the reason for all this? Um, um, yeah, fighting each other. What's the reason that um, they try to disprove? Or who wants to disprove God? What's the force behind? What's the what's the motivation behind? Well, the well, I, my, it's an opinion, of course. Uh, that is an opinion. But um, what's happening now is that um, is that uh, what's been what's tried what's tried to be shown is that there is no God. So that the force behind their theory or their reasons for arguing against it is because of why, faith. Why they want to show there is no God and who? Yeah, and we're talking about uh, the athe uh, atheists who don't believe, don't, who have a belief that there is no yeah, God. That's just the word, the atheists. But what force is behind? What uh, motivation is behind? Well, I, um, I would say belief in fa faith uh, and, and ridicule and uh, fear. That they're, I, I don't know. Um, I'm not a psychologist or a physiologist, whatever you call it. But I would have a theory, but um, you know, I actually would like to hear that, that you had made some research about Yeah, that. well, I have. I've, the research I found was, um, as John Sanford has said, and it shows everywhere there's more, there's more from other scientists. Oh, let me just share with you um, on that note that there is hope. Because I believe that the human, human satisfaction comes from once you've got your shirt on your back and your food in your mouth and your relationships going well, then you need to transcend that and go to a higher power. And that's why probably it could be a theory of mine that is, which is showing up, is that people will defend their faith like Christians defend their faith um, to the end, you know, and... Um, That is a very strong motivation for many people. But thank goodness also science is coming through in many, area, many atheists. Like John, I'll, I'll give you a sample. There's an atheist, a famous atheist. He's an astrophysicist. Um, and this is the next point I wanted to go into. But he, is, he has come out and said, basically, um, I, I surrender. I, I, my heart is with science more than I, my faith of atheism. And he said, it looks like there is something of so high intelligence that just keeps on beating on this. And he's like a big banner saying, I am here. And I'll share with you what that science is in a minute. But um, he says, it seems like someone has messed with the physics and maths. That is just, it's, 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 give, it's giving us an obvious sign that he ex something exists, a higher intelligence. Now, he's never even believed in a higher intelligence or anything before. Um, so his science has come through stronger than the atheist. And that's what we have to pray for, that the science will come, will eventually come through to show okay. what is, you know, science and okay. what is not science. I would like to share with you two, two thoughts I have right now. So first is there's a, there's a group, whatever you want to call them, and they're seeking power and to find or to get the power they need to control people to control people they need to overcome their higher values or their 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 uh, rule based faith yeah like we believe in in god and um, what god tells us we do but we will not follow a human human leaders uh, if they tell us to do something what is against God. So then the, then the second thought is, we talked about entropy, and my definition about entropy is actually, uh, you go from high order to low order, <clears throat> from, from balance to chaos, from system to chaos, yeah? Yes. And you set the energy. So you have free running energy, what is not uh, concentrated anymore, what is free. Yeah. Oh, good. Just a, so just like, a, just a, just a, a, a something on that. It's um, low entropy to high entropy. Okay. Yeah. I know that sounds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Entropy is chaos. 
in low entropy is more order, balance, harmony. Yeah. yeah. If you want. Yeah. So if if I'm looking at humankind right now and we are growing big in numbers and there is a high entropy right now in, in human population. There's social unrest. There's a lot of movement around the planet and um, people are divided in many groups. High entropy. Isn't that a, a, a law, a natural law, what we just, what we just um, witness? Correct. But it's not been able to be proven in science until... Um, until now, with the with the with the uh, with the latest technologies and things, we've always always known about entropy, but it just it's just not been really been able to be solidly proven, which is what he's doing. Entropy of any in isolated system. What what says? But you're right. I'm Everything just pasting. I'm just pasting the definition of the second law of thermodynamics because people are talking about it, and I I don't think people understand. Am it. I, I'm hearing things Martin, that that make me feel like Martin, people don't understand the law of thermodynamics. Martin, Martin, so, Martin yeah. may I stop you? There is not such an isolated system. All systems are connected to others. An isolated system right. doesn't exist. So isolated system, if you base a definition of isolated system, it is paradox already. Okay, yeah. now, this... you, you completely lost me on, on, on that. And guys, we're not going to discuss uh, isolated systems right now, all right? We're just not going to go there, all right? You guys can discuss it privately. So here's the deal. Um, I, I want to make things simple. I want to take everything that Kevin said up to this point and summarize it into two statements. Number one, the idea of evolution, and I'm not calling it a theory or a fact, people. I'm saying the idea of evolution um, was birthed by atheists. Okay, that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I, I, I want to say is, is that it seems to me that Kevin is saying that that many scientists or some scientists today have moved away from a um, from an adherence and holding to the idea of evolution because of scientific reasons. Now, are those two statements correct, Kevin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the big picture. Okay, <laughs> that's what's getting lost in all these little. Um, or rabbit trails that you guys are <coughs> going off on. So, so people, um, this may or not be true, but if what Kevin is saying is true, and we're going to grant him for the sake of tonight's argument that it is true, then that affects the way that we have conversations with people about whether or not a belief in the supposed science of evolution undermines your faith. Does everybody understand that? Because what Kevin would then be <coughs> purporting is, is that we have discussions with people to, shall we say, undermine their belief in a faulty, in a faulty idea on the basis of using the science, science that this man that he's referred us to <coughs> has come up with. Kevin, am I right? Yes. Um, and this is just one of many I can show you. Yeah, but we 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 we, we got to land someplace, okay? We no, can't no, go through. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we, you know, let's just take one and just land there. Yeah, and, sure. And, and then you can say, and this is just one example. Yeah. Of of many things um, that that go with that are necessary for the idea of evolution to to be yeah. an established scientific sure. fact or hypothesis or theory or whatever word you want to use. Fine. And that, that's being um, yeah. questioned and challenged by the scientific community. So <laughs> that's my summary, Kevin. Okay. Of where we're at. And we're going to have to stop here. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, that opens up the door for us to do lots of further study. And that helps us 
and the main thing that we've set out to do. Yeah. Um, we, we, we've, and so everybody, for the sake of conversation with people who raise evolution as a fact that then undermines our faith, <coughs> Kevin is saying scientific community is not holding to it as a fact. They're challenging it as a theory. Am I correct, Kevin? Yeah. Okay. And because of that, if we have access to some of these scientists and things like that, then if the person really, really, really is interested, then they might be convinced by what this gentleman um, has said. But here's where it gets back to Kevin's first idea. And the reason why he's so passionate is, is because with so many people, there is an atheistic agenda and they're holding to evolution. Now, Marty is pointing out that there's a lot of people who would call themselves scientists and also Christians who might be somewhere on the evolutionary spectrum, okay? And, and so <coughs> Martin and many of the Christians that I know of who are theistic evolutionists or whatever, that they would um, take it very offensively that they're trying to wrestle with the data is then being used um, by, the, by the thought police to then say you're not really a Christian. So, so we have to be very careful about that. We can't say that everybody who's holding to evolution or who's considering evolution or who's trying to wrestle with the data is an unbelieving, atheist, militant, no, no. secularist. And so this is important for us to realize, OK, no. because you can't just say that because evolution as an idea came from an atheist, that therefore everybody who tries to take the same data and then come up with a conclusion that yes, if they come up with the same conclusion that therefore they're atheists. But what we have done tonight, okay, and I want everybody to realize this, what we have done tonight is, is now we're seeing where the points um, of, of science versus faith collide. And I want to summarize those. The first place that they collide is on whether or not um, a personal God was active in a miraculous creation, okay? The Bible says he was. And, and um, uh, often people who don't believe the Bible account, they want to <clears throat> present it as something else other than um, God fashioning animals after their kind and God fashioning Adam and Eve, um, Adam first from the dust of the earth, Eve then from the rib uh, of a man. And so Kevin draws attention to the miraculous um, element in, in the story of Genesis 1 and 2. So... There, there is a challenge to our faith, but the point is, is that a lot of the people who are non-Christians, um, they're not going to have a starting point of faith to be inclined to accept the Genesis account. Um, they, they would need to um, have to reckon with science as science and have science undermine the idea of uh, evolution before they'd probably be open to considering the idea of a personal God. And I think that the man who you referred us to tonight, whatever, whatever his name is that I've forgotten, um, the, the, the guy who we, yeah, the guy who we just saw his, his video. I think that he's one of those people then who looked at the data and then came through a change of mind, change of heart, change of mind, change of heart that then led him to where he's at now. It, am I correct on that? Yeah. Okay. So, so it, here's, here's where the rubber meets the road. Um, when we're discussing with people who believe in evolution, we have to get at the bottom assumptions. Are they doing it because they're insisting on an atheistic agenda that says that a personal God was not active in creation? Or are they doing it because, like Martin, they're trying to wrestle with the fossil evidence and the scientific data? Okay. Uh, or are they in the middle of a combo? And um, and therefore, if if they were um, if they were presented with evidence that didn't fit with their theory, would they then um, lean on their atheistic side and then try and throw out the facts? So what what we've learned from this discussion is is that um, people's and I think this is an important thing for us to bring out people's faith assumptions, what they believe, in some way um, can affect or even corrupt the way that they do science but that isn't necessarily so in every case. So it can corrupt, but it doesn't necessarily corrupt. And I think these nuances are important for us to realize so that when we're talking 
with evolutionists. We just don't lump them all into the you're the stupid atheist, you know. Um, we, we we don't do that. Instead, we we do take the time to try and deal as laymen with some of the basic scientific data while we refer them to people who are much more adept than we are at explaining what the arguments are that supposedly undermine the theory of evolution. All right. So that's about uh, as far we could get as, yeah. as a summary. But I do think it was helpful to to bring out um, some of these things. I, I especially found the last point to be quite, um, quite I engaging. Um, so um, I'm sorry we have to stop here, but um, it's it's uh, after nine and um, and I got to go to bed. I've had a really hard few days, but <clears throat> let me ask for prayer requests. Um, and Kevin, do you have any final words uh, in summary? Yeah, and one of the conclusions I was going to make is one of the reasons that that's very difficult what you've just said there, but that's the essence, is that my brother, for example, will say always, I believe in science, Kevin. That's the problem. That's the problem. It's fact to him. Say it again. I lost you. Oh, he's not a scientist. He knows nothing about science. He's a, he's a, I'm losing Kevin. Yeah, he's an engineer. He's an engineer, so he does know about a little bit about science. But um, he's I not a hear Kevin. scientist. He's well, not we, a we scientist. Can, we can hear. We can hear Kevin. You're going through yeah, some I bad, can hear him. Okay. bad connection. He's though. not a scientist, but the basic reason for many people not coming to Christ is because they've been told, taught in school, that it's a fact. And so he, his argument to me is, Kevin, I believe in science. And I'm not going to try to change the genesis to a scientific theory that works for him. I'm not going to do that. I will try to, because uh, I didn't come through to Christ through science. But the thing is, that is the major problem. So we do have to solve that problem. I agree. But to change it so that it sounds okay that it's to him, because we have to change the science to evolution, it's not the answer, if it's not the truth. So um, it, it's a dilemma, and that's really where we need the answers to, to go to, because many people don't come to Christ because of Genesis 1 and 2. That's my point. I, I think we can agree that many people don't come to Christ yeah. because of Genesis 1 and 2. Yeah, and that he believes in science. You know. And well, because I believe in God, I don't believe in science. So that, that's the issues. But here's well, Kevin... Good. Um, Kevin, something we can't do, though, is, is reduce scientific discussions to faith attacks on faithlessness. On what? Faithlessness. On oh, faithlessness. Of course. Um, and I think that that's a lot of what I hear the supposed Christian scientists do. do is they no, we can. I am lost. I was waiting so long now for um, finding some answers or just asking some questions and maybe getting some answers or inspiration for answers. And I was listening for a discussion um, what is based on a problem which we don't see, actually. I believe that the problem we have right now, and we saw it beautifully the last few weeks in Martin and, and Kevin, that um, there are two worlds of arguments clashing each other and I would like to understand why is that like this? And um, I, I think it has to do something with trust or with um, the, the need of belief in something, but um, I, I don't know. But um, our discussion made me really tired and made me a little bit, um, I don't want to say angry, it made me sad. And... Um, I actually why, had the... Why is that? The, well, why did it make you angry and sad? Um, because, um, because we were turning in cycles the last few weeks. And, um, you know, maybe I had um, much um, knowledge before, I don't know. Um, I actually had some, some questions, deep inside questions. There are based on to understand why there is a movement against God, why there is a movement against um, faith in God, why 
why there is a force what wants to eliminate God um, and why it is so easily accepted from the broad um, people um, <coughs> that, um, that it can be in our schools as a fact, almost fact. I also grow up with that um, evolution. Uh, um, maybe I heard it once, it's a theory, but actually it is handled like a fact in school. So, mm. but it is a theory. Everything, and if I'm honest, everything in science is a theory. People don't know, scientists don't know about gravity, don't know exactly what about um, DNA, um, our region, yeah? People, uh, scientists don't know, and that's actually my reason to to believe in God is the, the Big Bang Theory. What is the impulse? What started the, the Big Bang? What, what uh, motivation was behind to start it? Which motivation started the Big Bang if Big Bang was the, the origin? Um, started it really 13, 13 and a half billion years ago and not earlier or later. What was it? So there must be an initial uh, impulse and that impulse must come from somewhere. But if there is nothing else, if there is just concentrated energy in a perfect balance, in a perfect low entropy, no entropy, where does this imbalance, this initial point come from? And that must be something like God. So for, for me, that was the initial point to believe that science needs God, actually. And, yeah. and for me, that's not a discussion anymore that that god has to be a part of science um for me it's a it's a really deep question why is there a force a motivation to be against god why is it so strong and why it doesn't stop <coughs> and okay well here's what you can do you can write <laughs> your questions out and you can send them to martin and to um and to kevin and then see how the two of them answer them and then converse with them while offline. Because um, I, I think this was really interesting and I, I appreciate Martin's um, <clears throat> weeks and I appreciate uh, Kevin's weeks. And I know we didn't get as far in either one of their presentations as, as we would have wished, but it's, it's caused me to realize a little bit more where I see the issues in conversations with unbelievers should be. Um, and um, and it's helped me to see where the issues are when someone is discussing, um, you know, uh, an evolutionist and a non-evolutionist. So regardless of whether or not they consider themselves Christians, but we've got to end it. So l let me um, uh, pray for us all and then we're going to have to go. So let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you that by faith, we believe that all that we see was prepared by you who we do not see. And that um, without faith, it's impossible to please you. But Lord, just as you've given us so many facts in the general revelation of the world that you've created, deliver us from turning everything into a special revelation and help us to be able to grasp the marvel of what you've done through your creation, through, through legitimate science, through the natural world that you've created. And Lord, help us to find truth wherever it's at and to not be afraid to embrace it, even if it challenges our own um, beliefs. So Lord, <clears throat> we come to you humbly confessing that none of us were around when the world was made, just as you made that point to either Isaiah or Job where were you when, when I was making the constellations? Lord, we weren't there, but you were. And we know, Lord, that all that we see didn't just happen by chance, even if there was a process of many years connected to it or not a process of many years connected to it. Lord, we know that all that we see didn't come into being by chance. It came into being by purpose. 
And Lord, your purpose for us, even though we are a fallen group of people, your purpose is to enter back into a new relationship with us so that we can call you our father and we can be called the children of the living God. Lord, show us that although we grasp that by faith, it's ever every much as real as concepts like love and honesty and truth and peace. And Lord, <clears throat> deliver us from the from the unbelief of thinking that all truth and the only truth that's out there is scientific truth, especially when we see that in many ways, science sometimes changes in their understanding of a subject or an issue or a concept or a theory or, or what they at one point thought was a fact. So Lord, help us to be better Bible students, to understand the way in which you've spoken to us through your revelation, but help us also to be better scientists, help us to be aware of our own assumptions, help us to be patient listeners with those who challenge our assumptions, and help us to be able to, in all areas of our life, embrace truth, hold to you, and give thanks in all circumstances, because you, God, are the God of truth. And Lord, deepen us in the truth which is in Jesus, deepen us in the truth that is in your world, that by grasping it, we will be in awe of you as our creator and of you as our redeemer. And so we thank you for this discussion. We thank you for Kevin and all the time he spent. Thank you for Martin and all the time he spent. We thank you for those who asked um, provocative questions. And Lord, we pray that you would bless those who came, bless those who didn't come, bless those who, like me, still have a heck of a lot of questions. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, guys. Well, as I said, I've had a hard few days. I got to get off. So I'm going to say bye bye now. <laughs>